Bro, what is your endgame? It is criminally underrated. Edgelord, incel energy. It blew my freaking mind. This is cuckoo bananas. Made me laugh out loud. Something is not quite right with you, boy. Freaking scarred me. Both had scenes that made my jaw drop. Hi, I'm Sam. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but I just read what I thought was the last volume of a manga series I've been really enjoying, only to discover that the final volume is coming out in October, and I have now months to wait for the finale. So, to distract me from the pain of that realization, I have decided to share with you today some book recs based on movies. So the first movie I had in mind isn't exactly a single movie because the energy of the book, I think, fit a lot of movies that share a similar energy. So the original movie I thought of was Joker, but this could also apply to Fight Club, A Clockwork Orange, Taxi Driver. Basically any movie that radiates edgelord incel energy would work for this book. The premise of all these movies is the protagonist is a white man who is dissatisfied with where he's at in life, whether that be romantically, financially, you know, anything. Social standing, and as a result, typically all of his rage that has been bottled up is then unleashed, and as a result, people around him suffer in some way. It's usually some violent event that is the climax of the story. So for those types of movies, I recommend the book Paradise by Fernando Melchor. This definitely radiates edgelord incel energy. This book actually ended up being on my best books of 2022, so this was really, really fantastic. So this is about two teenage boys inside this luxury housing complex. One of them lives in the housing complex, and the other one is a worker for the housing complex and then he lives outside of the complex. They become acquainted because they're both, again, these men who are very dissatisfied with where they're at in life. They just have so much rage inside of them and the story deals a lot with one of the boys being really obsessed with another woman who lives in the complex and very similar to the movies I mentioned. This also contains a lot of senseless violence but I just think it really captures that energy of male rage rage that doesn't have an outlet and then it finally just explodes and ends up hurting everyone around them. So you should read it. <laughs> okay, the next movie I have in mind is Mother. So this is a 2017 film written and directed by Darren Aronofsky. The premise of this is pretty simple, but I also think that the less you know about this going in, the better. Because even like the synopsis on IMDb is just, a couple's relationship is tested when uninvited guests arrive at their home, disrupting their tranquil existence. So this idea of losing control over what should be a safe space, your home, and having all of these unwanted visitors in there and no one is listening to you and that kind of makes you feel like you're going crazy. So for this I have chosen an Eric LaRocca book called We Can Never Leave This Place. So I have kind of a not troubled past with Eric LaRocca but this was probably the only one that I really really loved of his. All the others are just really weird and I think I just like them because I like how he's not afraid to take it to some really weird places. So this is about a young girl named Mara and she is living in a country that is actively experiencing war. So her father dies really unexpectedly and violently and following that event her mother starts to invite these seemingly random and dangerous looking people into their home. The mother is claiming that these people will help protect them from the outside world, but Mara is worried about the destruction that these people are going to bring into their home. So I think this really fits the vibe of Mother very well, in that, again, it's the horror of your safe space no longer becoming safe, and that feeling of constantly being on edge, like you're going crazy, why is no one listening to you? It seems like everyone else is going crazy, not you, but then the more it's happening and you're kind of being gaslit into thinking that it's normal, Normal, the more you feel like you're going crazy. So I really liked the movie Mother and I really liked this book. So if you liked either of those, you should watch and or read the other. The next film I would like to talk about is a Danish film from 2012 called The Hunt, which is translated from its original title, Yag Ten. And this is directed by Thomas Vinterberg. And this is following a teacher. And it seems like his life is really taking a turn for the better. He receives good news about getting custody over his son. He seems to be finding new love. 
But then one of his students tells a seemingly innocent little lie that then threatens this new happiness that he has found. So the book I would like to recommend for this is Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McClaid Chapman. So this book is inspired by the McMartin preschool trials and the satanic panic of the 80s. Whereas in The Hunt, we are following the main character who is the teacher. In Whisper Down the Lane, we're following a man who is now a teacher who we're reflecting back on when he was a child and there was an incident where a child lied and it threatened the life of one of his teachers. So I think if either of those sound good to you, you should read the book and watch the movie. Next, I would like to talk about the film Edward Scissorhands, which I think is a film that doesn't really need an introduction, but for those of you who don't know, this is a 1990 film directed by Tim Burton. And we're following this Frankenstein-esque man who has been constructed incompletely. So instead of having hands, he has scissors for hands. And he's taken in by this suburban family and it's kind of humorous the juxtaposition of this kind of freaky looking sort of Frankenstein monster in 1990s suburbia. But as with any Frankenstein coded story, there's obviously going to be a layer of melancholy as well. So the book I would like to recommend for this film is Monstrillo by Gerardo Samano Cordova. I've talked about this a couple times, but I really, really enjoyed this one. So this is about a family who loses their son at a really young age. And when the son Santiago dies, his mother Magos carves out a piece of his lung to save for herself and then she ends up nurturing the lung in such a way that it becomes this new little boy monster thing and they end up calling the little boy monster Monstrilio and he ends up growing up into a man and the more he grows the more he resembles Santiago. So I would say that Edward Scissorhands and Monstrilio are both very melancholy. We're focusing a lot on the people around the quote-unquote monster of the story desperately trying to get them to assimilate into their society and be quote-unquote normal but then also where we get a glimpse into the struggle that the monster faces in neglecting their sort of natural carnivorous violent urges and this sense of no matter how much they try to be quote-unquote normal they're only going to hurt people around them so a lot of those themes are explored in this book as well as in the movie Edward Scissorhands if any of that sounds interesting to you you should read Monstralio next I want to talk about another Tim Burton film this is Pee-wee's Big Adventure from 1985. So this is a really wacky movie and I loved this when I was a kid. So this is about an eccentric man-child named Pee-wee Herman and he gets his beloved bike stolen in broad daylight one day, which prompts him to set out on this cross-country journey to retrieve his bike and we're pretty much just following the shenanigans he gets up to. So very, very wacky, but there are also some scenes, like there's a scene where he's hitchhiking and he gets picked up by this semi-truck driver. And yeah, if you've seen this movie, especially as a child, that freaking scarred me. So anyway, for that, I would like to recommend The Hike by Drew McGarry. This was, again, very similar, just like wacky, goofy vibes. But then there were scenes where it was like, oh, shit just got real. So this is about a man named Ben who decides to go on a hike and he ends up getting lost. And he ends up going on this extremely long journey where he loses his sense of time and it's very Alice in Wonderland-esque in that he encounters these creatures and people and events that seem like they couldn't actually be real. Very, very silly, goofy, this sense of we're following this funny protagonist going on this long adventure. You don't really know what's going to happen next. If any of that sounds good to you, you should read this. The next film I would like to talk about is the 2016 film 10 Cloverfield Lane, and this is directed by Dan Trachtenberg. So this is obviously part of the Cloverfield universe of films. We're following a young woman who is held in an underground bunker. She wakes up and the man who is keeping her there insists that she has to stay in the bunker because there's a hostile environment and he brought her in here to protect her. So the whole time this woman is like, what the hell did this guy just kidnap me? But then as the movie progresses, we're starting to question, maybe he's telling the truth. Is he crazy? Is he just keeping me here? Is he 
he dangerous? Or did he actually save my life? I love stories that make you question the whole time. What's the truth? And for that, I would like to recommend the book, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This is about a pair of husbands and their adoptive daughter, Wynne, who go to this remote cabin just for a little vacay, blow off a little steam, have fun as a family. When all of a sudden these strangers stumble into their yard, hold them hostage and say, you need to make a sacrifice because the world is ending. And the only thing that can stop the world from ending is you making a sacrifice. So very similar to 10 Cloverfield Lane in that at first it's like, okay, these people are obviously crazy. They just like wanna mess with them, extort them or kill them or, you know, do awful things to these people. But then the more the story progresses, you're like, wait, is the world ending? I just don't know. And then you kind of like second guess yourself again. And you're like, well, wait, maybe they're just like really good at lying. Maybe I'm being persuaded. You basically are going round and round the whole time trying to figure out what's the truth. So if any of that sounds good to you, read this book. Uncle came to say hi. This is Uncle Crispy, his on-screen debut. Hey, get on the camera. Okay, the next movie I'd like to talk about is the 2011 film. Oh my god, Uncle, you're literally shaking the camera. Can you move just a little? Jeez, dude. Okay, the next movie I'd like to talk about is a 2011 film called The Skin I Live In, which is a Spanish language film. And this is directed by Pedro Almodovar. So this is about a brilliant plastic surgeon who is haunted by past tragedies. Throughout the film, we're following him as he's trying to create this synthetic type of skin that can withstand any type of damage. And the way that he's able to develop this is by experimenting on a human woman who he keeps locked in his house and it says that his guinea pig is a mysterious and volatile woman who holds the key to his obsessions. So when I saw this movie, it blew my freaking mind. It was so good. Gotta say, Antonio Banderas, if you've only seen him in Spy Kids, he's got a lot more range than that. So for this film, I would like to recommend a book that I do not yet have a physical copy for, but I hope to remedy that very soon. So the book is Perfect Days by Rafael Montes. This is the English language debut of Rafael Montes, who is a Brazilian author. And Perfect Days is another book that I recently talked about in my 10 best books of the year so far. This is Cuckoo Bananas. So similar to how The Skin I Live In blew my freaking mind the first time I watched it, this book blew my freaking mind the first time I read it. So this is about a medical student who, as soon as we're introduced to him, we're like, something is not quite right with you, boy. And he meets this woman named Clarice at a barbecue and he becomes immediately infatuated with her. She is writing a screenplay and she decides that she wants to go travel around and go to some of the places that she means to include in her screenplay. And as she's packing for the trip, the med student comes and is like, hey, I love you, but he's like really creepy about it. And she rejects him and is like, no, you seem kind of weird. And he knocks her out, stuffs her in her own suitcase, and then basically like hijacks her and her trip and takes her on the trip and holds her hostage in the hotel room. So the whole book, it's like, bro, what is your end game gonna be? But then as their families try to reach out to them, he's able to smooth talk them and convince both his and her family that they're actually dating. And the reason she's not responding to calls is because she is just really focused on writing her screenplay. Freaking cuckoo bananas. Both The Skin I Live In and Perfect Days had scenes and moments that made my jaw drop. Definitely pretty intense intense and violent. I would look up trigger warnings. Honestly, look up content warnings for anything I ever recommend. So if any of that sounds good to you, you should watch the movie and read the book. Okay, next we're going to lighten things up a little bit. So I would like to talk about the film Death at a Funeral, which is from 2007 and directed by Frank Oz. So this is a British film and I kind of watched this on a whim one day. I don't know if it just like hit me exactly right and was exactly what I needed that day, but there are very few films where when I watch it, I laugh out loud. And this film made me laugh out loud. This is about a family coming together following the death of their patriarch. And chaos ensues when a man shows up to the funeral that the family doesn't recognize and tries to expose a dark secret regarding the recently deceased patriarch. So this is very much dysfunctional family dynamics told in a super, super hilarious way. So for that, I would like to recommend Mostly Dead Things by Kristen Arnett. I think a lot of times when people look at this book and hear the synopsis for this book, they think it's gonna be a lot darker than it really is. And it's not to say that there isn't some dark themes, but Kristen Arnett is such a master of writing the dysfunctional family. She's really able to get at sort of the universality of family and how no matter how family looks, it can still be dysfunctional in the same way. So this is very similar to Death at a Funeral 
general in that following the death of the patriarch of the family, this family that was already pretty dysfunctional kind of descends even deeper into chaos. So the family owns a taxidermy business and when the father dies, Jessa Lynn steps up to manage the failing taxidermy business. And meanwhile, her mother starts sneaking into the taxidermy shop to make provocative art with the animal models. And her brother Milo is even more withdrawn and he was married to a woman named Bryn and he and Jessa Lynn were both in love with Bryn. So just like layers upon layers of family drama, but just so kooky and wacky and funny. And again, really getting at that sort of universality of family dysfunction. So I really enjoy Kristen Arnett's writing and I think if that sounds good, you should really check it out. So that was enough lightheartedness. Now we're back to the dark stuff. So next I would like to talk about the 2016 film, The Eyes of My Mother, which was written and directed by Nick Pesci. I freaking love this movie. Movie. I mean, honestly, all of these films that I talk about, I love, but this one especially, whenever people are like, I need a new horror recommendation, I always recommend this film because it is criminally underrated. So we're following this family who lives in a secluded farmhouse and a mother who is a former surgeon teaches her daughter, Francisca, anatomy and how life and death are not to be feared. And then one day, a mysterious visitor shatters their idyllic lifestyle and deeply traumatizes Francisca, but also awakens some morbid curiosity. So years later, Francisca clings to her increasingly distant father, but the trauma she sustained reawakens when her desire to connect with the world around her takes on a dark form. If you only watch one film from this video, watch The Eyes of My Mother. So for this, it was kind of hard for me to pick a book that perfectly matched the horror of the film. But when I was thinking back about the character Francisca, who is the main character in The Eyes of My Mother, she's extremely lonely. She's extremely isolated and there's this level of naivety and how even as she's exploring these more morbid curiosities, she doesn't see what she's doing as necessarily wrong. She's just really so starved for any sort of connection and any sort of affection. And that really reminded me of the main character from The Collector by John Falls. So again, really not extremely similar in story. I mean, a little bit. So the main character in this is Ferdinand and and he becomes really obsessed with this woman that he sees in town and he kidnaps her and collects her, if you will. So he keeps her in this basement area that he designed and constructed in his home specifically to kidnap and keep a woman. Again, he just is so starved for affection and he has this really delusional idea of love and how to express love. So he thinks that his love is so pure that what he's doing isn't wrong. So I think if any of this sounds good to you, definitely watch The Eyes of My Mother. And then you could also read The Collector by John Falls. Okay, next I would like to talk about the 1998 film The Truman Show, which was directed by Peter Weir. And admittedly, I didn't like love, love this film, but it definitely fits the vibe of the book that I'm about to recommend. And I love the book. We're following this main character who is played by Jim Carrey, and he's living this very cookie cutter, white picket fence life. And then his worldview is rocked when he realizes that his whole life is actually a reality TV show. So his whole life has literally been broadcast to the entire world, unbeknownst to him, and people are just enraptured by his life. So for that, I would like to recommend Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. So this is definitely a darker take on that idea of surveillance. This is speculative fiction wherein there are these little devices called Kentucky, which are like stuffed animals that have a camera in them for each Kentucky that exists in a household or a business, there is someone somewhere else in the world who has a connection code and they're actually the one who is commanding the Kentucky and they're looking through the camera. So obviously here we're exploring themes of surveillance, giving up privacy for just a smidge of feeling more connected and to relieve any sense of isolation or loneliness. Definitely there is some exploration of the beauty of being able to connect people from really distant places, but it's mostly exposing the ugly side of our world that's becoming increasingly linked and increasingly less concerned with 
maintaining privacy. I think if any of that sounds good to you, you should watch the movie and absolutely read the book. Okay, the last film I'd like to talk about is the 2014 film called Nightcrawler, and this was written and directed by Dan Gilroy. So this is about our main character named Louis Bloom, who is a con man, definitely doing like below the board type work, and he's able to muscle into the world of LA crime journalism, and he realizes that the more violence he is able to capture, the more successful he is, the more lucrative his footage is, the more likely news stations are going to want to purchase his footage from him. So as he becomes more and more sucked into this world of crime journalism, he ends up blurring the line between observer and participant in order to keep pushing the envelope and kind of serving up more and more violence. So for this, I wasn't able to find an exact book that really matched the plot of that, but the idea of getting so sucked into your work, which features exposure to a lot of violence, and examining how that impacts and changes a person. Uh, so that's very similar to the book We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Bervutz, and this was translated by Emma Rolt. So in this book, instead of crime journalism and capturing violent footage to be shown on the news, here we're following Kaylee, who is a content moderator for, you know, a social media platform. So she has to review offensive videos, pictures, rants, conspiracy theories, and decide which needs to be removed. So it's obviously very grueling work. Her colleagues spend all day watching horrors and hate on their screens. And there's also this pressure to perform, similar to Nightcrawler, where he feels this pressure to get even better footage so that the news stations will always want to come to him and pay him more for his footage. These moderators are constantly pushed. The more they review, the more they get paid, the more likely they are to get promoted, etc., etc. In this, we're really following Kaylee and her cohort as being exposed to this violence constantly, eight plus hours a day, five days a week, how that really changes them and starts to change their worldview and makes them feel like they're kind of going a little bit crazy. I love the movie Nightcrawler. I think if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go watch it. And I know this book is kind of subversive. A lot of people really don't like this, but I don't really think it deserves as much hate. I think it's really good and I really, really liked it. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you. That's what I can recommend based on movies. I really like making these videos. It's a lot of fun thinking up book companions to a lot of movies that I really love. So you can like this video if you want, comment, subscribe if you want. I would love to have you. And let me know if you agree with these companions that I've chosen. Let me know if you have any other book recs that would fit for these movies or movie recs that would fit for any of these books. And I'll see you in another video very, very soon. Okay. Peace.